Hi, and welcome to the DROPRO segment on installing a magnetic digital readout kit onto a milling machine. This video is the fourth of a four-part series and shows you how to install the display head onto your mill. Now, if you haven't seen the previous three videos, I would suggest watching them first because each video builds on the previous segment's material. All right, so let's get back to our mill and install the display head. Now, just like installing the scales, there is no one correct place to mount the display. It really depends on many different factors. The physical design of your machine, where the machine's controls are located, whether you prefer to look right or left at the display while you're machining, but most of all, your own personal preferences. Now, every situation is going to be a little bit different, but here are some general guidelines. First, you want to mount the display where it can't ever swing into the quill or your workpiece. Second, you want to mount the display where it's easy to read while you're machining. Third, you want to make sure whatever location you choose allows for easy access to all of your machine's controls, especially the emergency cutoff switch. And finally, you want to mount the display where it's easy to reach, yet at the same time you don't have to reach over any moving parts to get to it. Now because I happen to be right-handed, I think that mounting to the right side of the column will be the most convenient location for me. So somewhere right around here would probably work best, but the surface there is not a casting, it's sheet metal, and behind it is the electrical panel for the mill. So in other words, I need to make sure that any holes or bolts that I put through that panel don't short out or interfere with any of the electrical components inside. Now the good news is that I don't have to tap any more holes. All I need to do is to simply drill the two holes for the mounting bracket bolts to pass through. Now remember, every installation is going to be slightly different. And when you're choosing the right spot for your display, make sure to be as diligent as possible. Always keep your personal safety in mind when choosing the best location that suits your particular setup. All right, so just like we did with the scales, let's go ahead and put some of the double-sided mounting tape on the back of the display arm bracket. All right, so it looks like placing the bracket right about here is going to work well for us. So to provide enough clearance for the 6mm mounting bolts to pass through, I'll be using a 15 inch drill bit. But before I drill the holes, I first need to remove and take a look inside the rear access panel. So just as I said, inside the panel here, we do have some wiring. So I've got to make sure that any drilling that I do doesn't interfere with any of the electrical components inside the panel. All right, so let's go ahead and drill those holes. Okay, so now that the holes are finished, let's go ahead and permanently mount the display arm bracket. Now, just like the scale end caps, the bracket also has grub screws which help level the display arm after you install it. So don't forget to install those grub screws before you mount the bracket. All right, so now that I've finished attaching the mounting bracket, let's take a look at how to mount the display arm onto the bracket. First, we start with a 10 millimeter bolt. Simply put a metal washer onto the bolt and then pass it through the arm like this. And then we add a nylon washer. We put it through the mounting bracket. 
And then we slip another nylon washer between the bottom of the mounting bracket and the arm. And then finally finish it off with another metal washer and a lock nut. Okay, so now we can attach the display to the arm. First, we need to insert the 10 millimeter threaded rod into the tapped hole on the underside of the display. And then we add a lock nut, followed by a metal washer, and then a nylon washer. Next, we mount the entire assembly onto the display arm, followed by a nylon washer, and then a metal washer, and then we add a lock nut, Next, we need to attach the reed head cables to the back of the display and then install the power cord. Alright, so everything's finally connected. Let's go ahead and turn on the display and check it out. We'll turn the rocker switch on the back of the display to the on position. And as the display starts up, it first shows us the version number of the installed software. And here is the main working screen. Now, both axis readouts should be rock steady. None of the numbers should be flickering. Especially if the last two digits of any axis are flickering, what that indicates is that the read head and the scale were not installed with the hash marks on the same side. So let's go ahead and see exactly what that would look like. All right, so here's what it would look like if we had not aligned the hash marks on the read head with the hash marks on the same side of the scale. You can see that on the x-axis, the last two digits are flickering. So if this is happening to you, the solution is to simply remove the scale, swap it end for end, and then remount it. Alright, so let's go ahead and change that back to normal. Now the next item we might need to address is how to change the scale read direction. Let's take a look at the x-axis. Notice how the x-axis is reading negative when we move the table over to the left. But we probably want the display to read positive when we move the table to the left. So let's go ahead and go into the setup mode and see exactly how to change that. Now to enter setup mode, you simply push the wrench key. It's the lower leftmost button on the display. And you should now see select on the x-axis window. And what the display is asking you to do here is it wants to know which axis you want to change. We want to change the x-axis direction, so we'll go ahead and push the X key one time. And the display should now read linear. Now, if you look closely at the keypad, you can see that the 2, 4, 6, and 8 number keys also have outlines of arrows on them. These keys are used to navigate through the menu system. The up and down arrow keys step you through the different choices, and the left and right arrow keys change the values. So let's go ahead and arrow down to get to the next option. And the first option we see here is SC. SC represents the scale resolution. This represents the default value of 5 microns, which is the correct setting for our mill kit. Now, this option has more than just two choices, and if we arrow left or right, we can see here all of the different choices.
But our mill kit comes standard with five micron scales, so five is the correct choice. And I need to emphasize that this setting must match the actual resolution of the scales you have. If you set this value incorrectly, it can really mess things up. And the end result is that your readings will be off by usually a factor of five or more. The important thing to remember here is that this setting is not optional. It must exactly match the resolution of the scales. So we'll go ahead and leave it at five. So let's arrow down. And next we see DP 5.0. Now, this setting represents the display resolution, and this setting is user selectable and can be changed to whatever suits you best, as long as it's equal to or greater than the resolution of the scales you have. Let's go ahead and take a look. Again, the default is 5.0 or 5 microns, just like before. And this option also has more than just two settings. And if we arrow left or right, We can again scroll through all of the different choices, but unlike scale resolution before, we can make some useful changes here. Now, my mill kit includes five micron scales, so if I want my display to show me the best resolution possible, 5.0 is the correct choice to make. But what if I'm only roughing out some brackets and I only want my display to read to three decimals? Then I could choose 20.0 or 20 microns, and the display would only read to the nearest thousandths. Let's go ahead and take a look. So let's first change the value to 20.0. So now that DP is set to 20.0, which is what I want, I'll arrow down to the Save Change command. I'll push the Enter button and then arrow down twice to end, and then push the enter button again. And now on the x-axis, I can see the change to my display. Notice that the x-axis is only reading to three decimal places, or 20 microns, which is what I wanted. And for doing some rough cuts, this would be very handy to have. All right, so let's get back into setup and get back to our normal resolution. I'll first push the wrench key, followed by the X button, and then I'll push the down arrow key twice, and I can see here that the DP setting is reading 20.0, which is the value I last set it at, so I'll go ahead and change that back to the default of 5.0. Now, a very popular question we often get is, can you choose a higher resolution than the scales you have? In other words, could I set or choose 1.0 as my scale resolution? And the short answer is no. You can't choose a better resolution than the scales you have and also expect the display to read correctly. So if I have five micron scales, my valid options for setting the display resolution is at least 5.0 or higher. All right, so let's get back to our original quest and figure out how to change the scale direction. Now first, we need to arrow down until we see the default value of left. So here's the menu setting that we want to take a look at. This option sets the direction of the scale or in other words, which direction it counts positive and which direction it counts negative. And we can see here, as we arrow to the right, the two options are either right or left, and again, this is completely arbitrary. Simply put, if your scale is not counting positive in the direction that you want, you simply need to come to this option and change it to the opposite value. So for us, we'll go ahead and change this value to right, and then we'll arrow down to the Save Change option. We'll go ahead and push the Enter button, arrow down twice more, 
and then push the enter button one final time. And now I can see that when I move the table to the left, my x-axis value is increasing in value or becoming a more positive number rather than counting negative like before. So that's what I wanted to do. Now, before we finish up, it's important to note that anytime you make any changes to the setup menu, it's important that you exit the menu through the save change and then the end prompts in order for the settings to be saved to the display. Alright, well thanks so much for watching and that concludes the fourth part of our how to install a mill kit onto a milling machine video. It's easy to install, I've shown you how to do it, and now you can do it too.